Hi, and welcome to Homeschool Quick Tips. I'm Dr. Georgia Purdom. This is Dr. Jennifer Rivera, and we are two homeschool moms with a lot of experience who also work as part of the team here at Answers in Genesis to help develop uh, programming and resources for the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. So the purpose of this program is to help you know how you can use those program resources and so much more that Answers in Genesis has to offer in your homeschool. So today we are joined as well by Mr. P of Unlocking Science fame. This is Dr. This is Mr. Roger Patterson. Just Mr. <laughs> Just Mr. <laughs> and he is an education specialist here at Answers in Genesis. So we are here in the Creation Education Lab today to talk about our high school lab science offerings. And so uh, Dr. Rivera and Mr. Patterson are very much involved in those. So I'm going to let them talk about all the great offerings that we have. All right, so this coming year, we actually have three different courses that we're offering, biology, chemistry, and forensics. So I teach the biology and forensics, and Mr. P teaches our chemistry course. And next year, we're excited that we will be adding uh, earth and physical science. Mr. P is going to be adding that next year. So keep that in mind. Look for uh, more information on that coming yep, soon. It's going to be great courses. It's going to be awesome, to yes. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about our high school courses, uh, what we have are basically 24 hands-on labs that students are going to get here. Uh, in just 12 days, right? And that's what makes it very yes. doable <laughs> for homeschool families. I mean, we had some families traveling five hours to get here. Uh, so it makes it feasible to do that uh, because we do break it up throughout the year as well. So we start in September and then we end in April and we do take the entire uh, holiday season off from Thanksgiving through Christmas. Uh, so when kids come, they'll get two two-hour sessions, and so they get you know 24 full labs in each of these disciplines. So in biology, we're going to be covering you know the science of life. That's what biology basically means, uh, of course, from a biblical worldview, because we can't truly study life Absolutely. without starting with God's word, and that is the foundation of all of our courses here. I'm also going to be teaching forensic science, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, probably about 20 different disciplines in the realm of forensic science, uh, as well as exper experimentation to go with every one of those. Uh, so I know our students are going to have an awesome time. Now, Mr. P, why don't you talk about chemistry a little bit? All right. Now, I'm not a homeschool mom, but I was a homeschool dad. Our youngest <laughs> just finished and is heading off to college. But uh, I've been involved in uh, education since I graduated from college. And the chemistry part is really fun for me because it's something that most homeschool parents really can't do it in what I would call an adequate way with all the lab equipment and burners and glassware that you'd need. You'd need thousands of dollars mm -hmm. in equipment. So that's one of the great benefits of our labs. And what we do in the chemistry labs is teach you lab techniques and things that you'll have, especially if you're going off to college and college prep. So we'll be looking at a broad range, but really it's focusing back on how God has created all these things in amazing, predictable ways that demonstrate his character in nature all around us. And one of the things that I really appreciate as um, a homeschool mom of a teenager, okay, now while I am a scientist, I know that science is really done best in a collaborative setting. You're, you're never typically on your own doing science, right? Um, when you look at how papers are published uh, in the scientific field, there's like 20 different people, right, Absolutely. that contributed to that. And so what I love, and, and having an only child especially, I think it's really important for her to be able to come here and collaborate um, with other uh, kids. Uh, to be able to learn how to do uh, good science and obviously, like we said, to learn science from that biblical worldview. And I love, too, that we have professional instruction because while I might be a biologist, a geneticist, I'm not a forensic scientist and I'm not a chemist. And so what I love is that somebody else gets to teach those things that does have expertise in those areas. And again, um, very affordable. We really try to make this a, a good experience for everyone, uh, including your pocketbook. And so we want to be able to do that. So I think Roger today, okay, so if you've watched Answers.TV, uh, Roger is of the Unlocking Science fame. Mr. P here has done many different programs. And um, so one of the things that he is known for is blowing things up. Well, safely, of course. Safely, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a little experiment. This is part of what we do with our um, combustion lab activity with the students. And I'm going to show you a little demonstration of how you can make a rock explode. <laughs> okay. Cool. Awesome. But safety first. I've Thank got you. my fire extinguisher down here on the floor for safety. <clears throat> Let's put our glasses on. In this canister, I've got a little rock called calcium carbide. 
It just looks like a little tiny gray rock. There's nothing fancy about it. Okay. This little tiny gray rock. I'm going to add this to this little beaker or this little dish of evaporating dish here that has a little bit of water and soap. And immediately you'll notice it starts to bubble and fizz. And those little bubbles are actually liberating acetylene gas. So if I bring this lighter close, oh. we'll be able to see those bubbles igniting, releasing some carbon in the air, the little black smoke that you're seeing, and the combustion products of carbon dioxide and water vapor. So we've got oxygen in the air, and acetylene there is the fuel and an ignition source, and we get these little bursts of flame. So we'll teach the kids about that. And one of the activities we do involves capturing some of that acetylene gas and making a miniature little test tube bomb inside of these racks. <laughs> Okay. Now again, we're doing this all safely and, and under very supervised situations. So I'm going to drop one of these rocks in here. Because you might be scared to do this at home, but here <laughs> we can do it safely yes. and well. <laughs> I'm a professional blower upper. <laughs> so we're going to add one of these rocks in here and I'm going to try to capture that gas inside of these test tubes. And part of experimentation is looking mm -hmm. at variables. Mm -hmm. So right. I'm going to fill one of these test tubes, if I can get the over the rock there. I'm going to fill it up pretty much full with the gas and pull it out here and set it off to the side. Uh, I'm going to fill this one about a quarter of the way full. Looks like we're going to have to get another rock here in just a second. So this is demonstrating the principle of water displacement. So the air, the gas bubbles are bubbling up and pushing the water outside of those beakers. And we're going to get a, about a quarter of this one full. So we'll give that just a second to bubble up. So this is changing one thing about this scenario and giving us a different variable to examine. And that's part of scientific exploration. So there's that. I'm going to have to grab another rock. Oh, another piece of well, that's fun. Carbide. That's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now these, we're going to put just a little tiny bit in here. Oh, now this is the tricky part, trying to capture that gas. All right, we'll get just a little bit in that one. And just a little bit inside of that one. Okay, now Dr. Rivera, you get to be <laughs> the uh -oh. igniter. <laughs> okay, so this one we had full of gas. And we'd ask the students to be making predictions about what they think is going to happen inside of all these. Let's go ahead and move this back over here. I'm going to lift this up. Go ahead and set the lighter right up here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start it. Pull that. There we go. Now I'm going to get a certain flame pattern inside of here. Now you'll notice that's only burning right at the mouth because the, the test tube doesn't have any oxygen inside of it. Mm -hmm. The only source of oxygen is right out here in the air. Oh, there we got a little bit of <laughs> secondary ignition there. This one should have a little bit more oxygen in it, so I'd expect it to burn more rapidly. Ooh, and we yeah. see it burn quickly back into the tube. Mm -hmm. And we call this an incomplete combustion reaction with all the black carbon that you can see inside of there. Now these, because there's a higher ratio of oxygen to fuel, should give us a little different effect. And you probably heard that little whistling, that, yeah. popping sound and it burned very cleanly. Mm -hmm. Let's try that one more time. Ooh. And there, we got a very <laughs> fast reaction. The reaction happens so quickly and cleanly uh -huh. that we get that little whistling sound as the air gases are exchanged around the mouth of the tube, just like if you were to blow across mm -hmm. the surface of the tube. Yeah. So we'll do fun things like that, mm -hmm. but actually learn about the principles behind them right. and teach all of those things. So our kids were part of a co-op with our mm -hmm. church family and things, and they got to do some of these types of things. But this is a real experience to get a lot more in-depth, detailed, hands-on uh, experience here with all the different chemistry equipment, biology equipment, forensics, and then the future of physical science and earth science. Yeah, and so it's just a really great um, way. I know, especially even 
if you just have maybe one teen at the time or two, it's just kind of hard. It's a lot of setup to do labs and to do all of that work for one or two people. Um, and again, science isn't done in isolation. And so it's really a nice way for them to make friends and collaborate and do that here at the Creation Museum in a time frame that I think really fits well for most families. And so if you're coming and you have younger kids, you can explore the grounds. There's other things you can do here um, if you want to come for the day. And so uh, we hope that you will join us and you can find out more information on the Creation Museum website under education.